Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. This morning, we're still talking about the names of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this morning, we got a good one. Go to Romans, the eighth chapter. Hallelujah. We're starting to move down the list here. And then when we finish, we're going to get it. We're just, we're just, try, we're, listen, this is the year of uh, manifestation, visitation, and demonstration. The Lord, the Holy Spirit, revealing himself to us afresh and anew. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. But looking in Romans, the uh, eighth chapter, we'll pick up the 19th name of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And this one is the spirit of life. Everybody say the spirit of life. Everybody say the spirit of life. Thank you. I, I could hear you that time. Couldn't hear you the first time. Glory to God. Out of Romans chapter 8 verse 1. Um, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of of sin and death. Look, uh, kind of hold your place there. You got the, one of these little tie things. You just stick it in there and run over to Ezekiel. Chapter 37. That's right after Ezekiel chapter 36. Tried to help you out. Make sure you can find it. Amen. Looking down here. Zach's found it. Yeah. Page 599. Mine's page 863. Remember back when Jerry Fall was on the radio all the time, he'd say, turn to such such page in your, you know, uh, Jerry Falwell study Bible, whatever he called it, you know, but you had to, he, they had the pages, it would help you out there. Verse 1, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones, and caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, there was very, very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very, very dry. He said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, thou knowest. In other words, I don't have a clue. You know, but I sure don't have a clue. And again, he said to me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and bring upon up flesh of, unto you and cover you with skin and put breath in you. And ye shall live and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise and behold, a shaking. And his bones came together. And then the bones came together and bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above. And there was no breath in them. And he, and when I, and he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breath upon these slain, uh, and breath upon the, these slain, that they may live. And so I prophesied, and he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up at their feet, an exceeding great army. Now, understand, and we've said this before in teaching on, on the spirit of man, that the Hebrew word and the Greek word for breath, for wind, and spirit is the same word in those languages. In other words, the word for, uh, in, in the Greek, uh, in, the, in the word used in the, in the Septuagint for the translation of the Hebrew word for breath, wind, and spirit is pneuma, okay? And then there's a Hebrew equivalent. I don't have that in my notes, but it, the Hebrew equivalent is the same thing. It means breath, wind, or spirit, okay? And so he, he, he was saying here prophesying, and he said, say to the wind. See, he's saying, say to the spirit. Come, breathe. Hallelujah. See, he's the spirit of life. I say, he's the spirit of life. Glory to God. Remember when the, when the child died and the prophet came and he, and he stretched over and breathed on him and, and into his, in his face and he lived? Yeah, yeah. Amen? Yeah. See, the Holy Spirit, he is the spirit of life. The New Testament calls him the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But he's the spirit of life. John 6, 63. And so he told him, prophesy, say, say to the wind, Come came and breathed on them and they lived. See, the Holy Ghost, it is the, it is the act of the Holy Ghost 
to breathe on your life, to breathe on aspects of your life and bring the, bring the life of God into manifestation. He, Jesus says in John 6, 63, he says, it's the spirit that quickeneth. Now, that's King James. That means it makes alive. It's, you know, the word quickeneth is an Elizabethan translation of a Greek word that means to make alive. Quicken, quickeneth, quickened, make alive. It is the spirit that makes alive. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit. They are life. Everybody say life. Thank God for the life of God. Oh, my, 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 my. I'm telling you, the, the, the life of God. Let's go ahead and get one more scripture here. Hallelujah. Uh, well, that's it. it. It is the work of the Spirit. I, I, I thought I had one more there. I don't. It is the work of the Spirit. He is the Spirit of life. That means, now look, we, we always think that God's you know, judging, God's creaming out, God's knocking you out, God's crushing you, God's destroying you. And I, listen, there is a side of judgment that comes when people walk in continual disobedience and continual sin. You will walk into judgment. I mean, that's just, you know, that's that. But that, that is continuing and practicing and rejecting the dealings of God. His spirit will come and strive with you way before judgment shows up. What do you mean strive with me? He'll try to get you back over into life. He'll, he'll pull you back to the things. He'll, he'll try to draw you back to the things of life. That's his work. He'll try to impart life. He'll, 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 he'll work with you. So he strives with you. He works with you. He deals with you to get you out of where you could enter into judgment to enter into life. He wants, God wants you walking in life. Amen. Doesn't walk you walking in death. God doesn't want me walking in death. And when I say, say something, say it. Say, God doesn't want me walking in death. Now, Siri, shut up. Oh, shut up, Siri. All right, everybody say, shut up, Siri. Hallelujah. Praise God. I was, going, I was trying to get, my, get a Bible translation up in here for me to look at real quick. And um, Siri wanted to get involved. The other day, I hit Siri, and she says, I'm not available. Well, shut up. If you're not available, just shut up. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, the, the, the word here, where it says in Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 2, it says, the law of the spirit of life that is not bios, which is biological life. It is zoe. It is the manner of life or the God kind of life. It is the life that God has. He is the spirit who imparts and works the life of God into you, to your circumstances, to the situations that surround you. It is the Holy Spirit who is at work imparting that. And, see, and when his life comes in contact with things, it eradicates the law of sin and death. Amen. Somebody say Glory. Thank God. You know, thank God there's a law that works us greater than the law that operates the law of sin and death. There's laws that work in, in the kingdom of heaven that supersede the laws that work in the kingdom of darkness, praise God. See, it's the kingdom of death. You know, um, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. And the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, the kingdom of Satan is a kingdom of defeat, a kingdom of death, a kingdom of destruction, a kingdom of misery. But there's a law that works in us and imparted to us and is being worked in us by the Holy Ghost who is the spirit of life. See, people will go around and blame God. God put this sickness on me. No, no, no. That's not out of the kingdom of life. He's imparting life into you. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you. He shall quicken, make alive your mortal body. What's mortal mean? Death doomed. You're going to die one day if Jesus doesn't come back. But he'll make it alive. He'll make it well. He'll make it strong. He'll make it whole, praise God. That is the work of the spirit of life. The life of God in you quickens you. Did y'all get baptized in, in ice water this morning? I mean, I should have to shout about three times and run around the building. <clears throat> Amen. There's a law. See, laws, hallelujah, have parameters. They just function because they function. Gravity works because God made it work. Well, I don't believe in gravity. Doesn't matter if you believe it or not. It's a law. And the reason you're not floating off in outer space is because of gravity. If you don't believe in it, we got a 24-foot extension ladder back here in the, uh, over in the other building. We'll go out here and put it on the side of the building, let you climb up and jump off. Whether you believe in it or not, that law works. 
And depending on, on how, how big you are, determine how big of a splat you make. Because you're going to splat. Why? Because of gravity is a law. It works. It works. It just works. And see, when you come into the kingdom of God, there's a law working in you. Now, one thing is this, whether you believe it or not, when you get born again, you're going to go to heaven. I mean, and whether you believe in the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus or not, if you're born again, if you accept Jesus as Lord, and you say, well, I don't believe that law really works, it doesn't matter. You're still going to heaven. That law's produced life in your spirit. Amen. Now, if, if, if the spirit of God is dwelling in you, he'll quicken your mortal body. See, when you, now, when you go cross grains to the law, it doesn't work, but when you work with it, Oh, well, uh, gravity works. You go cross grain with it, it hurts you. When you, go co when you work, co cooperate with it, it's a blessing. Did you know the law of thrust and lift doesn't, uh, I've, I've said in the past, supersedes the law of gravity. Actually, it works in conjunction with the law of gravity. See, they lift, they lift those planes up and they, and they create the law of thrust and lift and gets the planes in there. But gravity, if you know, if they get it 27,000 feet and they're cruising at 27,000 feet with the law of thrust and lift, gravity keeps them at 27,000 feet. Because if it didn't, they just, they'd just go right on out in outer space with it. All right? So gravity is still at work. It's just that you're using something else that, that, that in conjunction with it. So the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is working in you. And the law of faith, faith is like, is like a law. You work with that. It'll produce all the results of that life in you and be a blessing to you and never be a curse to you. It'll never bring cursing on you. It'll always bring blessing on you. Ooh, glory to God. That means I can go to that law of the spirit of life of this Christ Jesus and believe that, you know, according to the word of God, that I'm healed by Jesus' stripes and that life works in me. There's a, his Zoe life, life in the manner that God possesses is at work. And the Holy Ghost is at work in you today, striving to bring the results of that law into manifestation in your life. Praise God. I'm glad he's at work. Now get, get in cooperation with him. Stop resisting him. Stop going cross grains to that law. With what? Unbelief. Yeah, big flap jaw mouth gets you in trouble. Hello. Uh, Mark Hank was on, the, on, on, um, on one of his programs the other day. We were listening to it. And this guy walked up and said, I don't believe that confession stuff works. He looked down and said, what would you say? He said, I don't believe that confession stuff works. He said, what would you say? He said, I said, I don't, and about eight times this guy did it, and finally the guy stopped because he kept asking, he kept saying to him, what'd you say? And the guy went, oh, I got it. He didn't believe it worked, so it wasn't working for him. He was saying he didn't, he didn't believe what he said had an effect on him, <clears throat> so he was saying whatever. He finally got it. You're going to have to say what God says. You have to start cooperating with the laws of God so we can just walk in the fullness of the blessings of God. Well, I want to walk in the fullness, don't you? I want to walk in the complete blessings of the Lord, don't you? I don't want to walk in half, halfway stuff. I want to walk in the full. And so there's a law of Zoe, life in the manner that God possesses at work in me by the Holy Ghost. And every day, every moment, he's, he's working in me to manifest the, the results of the life of God in me. And then in you, he wants you to be walking in the manifestation of the life of God working in you today. He wants your body well. I said he wants your body well. He wants your finances blessed. He wants your mind sound. He'll, now, listen, there's, there's things we do. We work in conjunction with the word of God. We go to the word of God. But that law is there. If you'll, if you'll apply it, it'll work. Now, there's a law that says, that, you know, that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. But if you don't have any action, there won't be the opposite equal. There's ways to let, get, there's ways to cooperate with the Holy Ghost to have that law work in your favor. I want to work it in my favor. I don't know about you. How about you? I want all the laws, of, I want all the life of God working in my favor. I want to be able to say to the breath, to the wind, to come and to breathe life. And I tell you right now, he can breathe life on your finances. He can breathe life on your body. He can breathe life on this church. He can breathe life on the work of God. And, and just let me say something. There's something, it's not a miss, but there's something uh, happening in the, in the world right now. It's like all of a sudden there's an awakening to all this junk that's been going on in the church the past few years. It's all of a sudden people's eyes are opening up. They're getting tired of seeker sensitive. They're getting tired of seeker friendly. They're getting tired of relevancy. They're, they're getting hungry for the things of God. There's a desire to have God and not have everybody cater everything to them and water it all down. There's something going on. And I'm excited. Why? Because we ain't changed.
And they went out, people went out looking for all the stuff, but they're, going to, they're coming back, they're looking. They're, look, they're, looking for, they're looking for truth. They're looking for revelation. They're looking for something that says, you know, there's something bigger than me, and there's something more important than me, and there's nothing more, uh, more desired than me. And God's at work, praise God, hallelujah. And he's breathing on the earth. I'm telling you right now, Jesus is not that far off. Well, I've heard that, for, he's been saying that for 2,000 years. Well, uh, shut up. There's things that are happening in the past few decades, in the past few years, that hadn't happened yet, that were prophesied that would happen. Number one was Israel to become a nation again. Well, that didn't happen until 1948. <clears throat> but it happened. I said it happened. And, and, no, and, and every anti-Jewish person in the world has been mad about it since. And, there's, and, and we, we got... We, we got we got situations. We need to be praying for our country because our current administration is anti-Israel and pro-Islam. Now you just go, go check it out. You go. It's, it's, they're doing things behind the scene. They're trying to. They're trying to get. They've sent people over to get Netanyahu kicked out of office, get him defeated in the next election. They're. They're. Um, they threatened to shoot down the Israeli jets if they went over and tried to blow up the Iranian nuclear reactors. We threatened to shoot down Israel's jets. Now, God said to natural Israel, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. We don't want to be under a curse. I want to be under a blessing. Well, I believe, you know, and I believe that, listen, well, that was, that, that was in the Old Testament. I'm telling you, God's word it endures forever. And God said to Abraham that I will bless you and bless you and, 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 and increase you and increase, and I'll curse them that curse you and bless them that bless you. God ain't changed that. Every, the United States has been so blessed in, the, in, in so many ways because we stood with Israel. We cannot stand against Israel. All right? There's stuff going on. I mean, there's just stuff going on. I mean, you know, the, uh, they, they, they tried to wipe them out in the, in the Second World War, and they couldn't do it. They tried to wipe them out, and, 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 and of course, after the World War, the, the Jews just started migrating back to Israel. And just, you know, that was not permitted, but they did it anyway. And then in 1967, they were, going to take, they were going to take them out. Well, that backfired. They got more land. I said they got more land. They came and they were going to try to wipe Israel out, and they ended up with a whole lot. Now everybody goes, well, you've got to go back to the pre-'67 borders. <laughs> Are you kidding me? At their, widest, at their narrowest point, Israel is 50 miles wide. They can sit out there and bomb the whole, whole across that whole 50 miles with weapons and just blow them up. All the, and that's what they sit out there and bomb them, bomb them, bomb them. And when Israel retaliates, oh, those mean Jews, they went and killed children. What do you think all those other people are doing? Well, how did I get off? Of oh, because God said they would become a nation again. They've become a nation. There are people who don't like that. Speaking of that, I have a friend. Fawaz visited uh, one of our army I meetings. Mean, I don't know if he came to the church or not, but Fawaz... I think he did come to church one time in the past year or so. Uh, and one of my roommates at Ramah, Fawaz was a Jordanian. And he grew up in Jordan and he, was a, he grew up and his goal in life was to join the Jordanian Air Force and go bomb the Jews. That's what he told me. Then he got saved. Now he loves, it, but he had, loves the Jews, but he had people, in, people he knew fought in the 67 war. And they would tell him stories. They said, we came up with our tanks, and we came up on the dunes, and we came up, we were ready to attack and go in and attack Israel. And they said, on the, on, the, on the ridges of the dune were millions of soldiers. This is what, these are people who were trying to kill the Jews, telling him what happened. They're just not making this stuff up. They, they went to kill the Jews, and when they got there, there were millions of soldiers. They didn't have millions of soldiers. They that be for us are more than be for them. The angels of the Lord encamp round about them. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Millions of soldiers showed up to fight for Israel. What? Angel. God sent his angels to what? Honor his covenant. I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. I'm telling you right now, if you think we should be against Israel, you are crazy. Thank you. <laughs> Anti-scriptural and crazy. Well, I, I just don't like Jews. You better say that's a wrong spirit. Well, they were Christ killers. No, the devil killed Jesus. Are you here? You know, they, they killed Christ. No, they, that was just, that was just that was a spirit that came. I'm telling you, there were, Jew, there were Jews that wanted Jesus. But it was the devil trying to take out the plan of God. It wasn't that, they, that the Jews were Christ killers. Come on, come here, give me a break. 
Jesus had to die. He said these things must be fulfilled. He had to die. The high priest offered him up. That had to be done for us to be redeemed. So whoever, t- whoever was involved in it, thank God Jesus went through the process. Jesus came up, resurrected. Eternal life has been granted to us. Hallelujah. Now we can receive that life through, the, through Jesus Christ, through the spirit of life working in us and receive redemption and salvation. Glory to God. And I, but we got off with all this other stuff because God prophesied, amen, that, you know, that the, the Israel will become a nation again. They did. Just like the scripture said, people aren't happy about it, but it doesn't matter. And we better stand with them because if you don't, you're going to get burned. You're standing against them, curse will come on us. I don't want to get burned. I stand with them as a nation in the natural. Now, all that because the spirit of life's in the earth. Amen? And he's breathing, he breathed and the nations come into being. That same Holy Ghost is at work in the church. There's some things going on in the earth. And we need to hook up with the spirit of life so we can get him imparted in the people. I'm t- I mean, we're having miracles happen. I prayed for a guy at Walmart the other day. And he walked off with his knee. He came in with his knee hurting, came up to the, came up to the drink machine, and leaned up there get next to me in line. And, and, I, and I said, man, are you tired? He said, no, my knee's hurting. And he began talking about how he had knee surgery. And if he had known he had, the, the knee surgery was going to hurt him so bad, he wouldn't even have the surgery because it's hurting worse now after the surgery than it did before. And I said, well, I just kind of shook my head and turned around. Then the Spirit of God said, you can practice what you preach. I thought, oh, God. <laughs> Either you're going to, you know, you tell everybody else to go do it. Now here you are. You're not doing it. So I turned around and said, can I pray for you? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. And, you know, of course, he probably thought I was going to go home and pray for him. I said, I reached out and grabbed the hold of his knee and started praying for it. And next thing, I, and I, then I quit praying for him. Said, you know, praise God. He said, I believe. I said, well, go for it then. Then I turned around and waited for them to check me out. And next thing, I knew I see him walking around. He's walking around all up there. His wife's in line with, it, with their, their son. He's just walking around. And as he's walking around, he comes back and goes, he said, it feels better already. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We went over to Winston-Salem the other week, uh, last Sunday. And Dee Dee came. Dee Dee's been visiting us before. But we had prayer call. And she had a, 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 her hus- a friend of her husband uh, the, uh, the, the, the had ke- leukemia. We are in chemo. And came and, came and uh, she wanted a prayer cloth for him. We prayed over the prayer cloth, sent it. She came this morning and testified. She said, well, I, we took the prayer cloth, prayed, and gave it to him. And so they went back to the doctor, and he didn't have to have any more radiation. It's all gone. Amen. See, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is at work. And if we'll start working and allowing it to function and to flow, we're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders. What's going to happen? People are going to get saved. People are going to come into the kingdom. There's going to be transformation of life. Why? Because the spirit of God is at work producing life. Amen? When you watch the ministry of Jesus, everywhere he went, life was produced. People were dead and Jesus came and they were raised up from the dead. He went and they were sick and they were, they were healed, praise God. He went and they didn't have any money and prosperity came. I'm telling you, wherever Jesus touched something, life came into it. And the spirit that was on him is the spirit that's at work in us. Yeah. And men and women are looking for what we have. Yeah. Peter and John came to the gate called Beautiful. And there was a man there who sought alms, laid daily at the gate and sought alms. I mean, he'd been there all his life. They, they probably walked by him all the time when Jesus was going in and out and moving around. And, and, but the Holy Ghost came on him. And that man looked, and that man was crying out for alms, and Peter and John looked at him. And when they looked at him, something rose up on them. All the spirit of life in Christ Jesus says, silver and gold, we don't have any. But what we do have, we give to you now. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He jumped up from there and they went leaping, walking, and praising God into the temple. Then they got mad about it. They had to preach a sermon to them about, you know, you you crucified him and God raised him from the dead. And by his name and through faith in his name, you see this man right here. You know this man. You've seen him every day. You've watched him sit there. You've watched him suffer. But the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus manifests today. And when it was in manifestation, this man's walking. You know he's been there all his life. But now God's life has gone into him. And he's leaping and walking and praising God. It was by faith in his name. He was raised up. You all witness, you're all witnesses. They couldn't argue. But they said, you're all witnesses. You saw him, but we, we said in the name of Jesus, that law, the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, manifest. And it came in contact with the law of sin and death. It came in contact with the laws that govern Satan's kingdom of, dis- of, of destruction, of pain, of misery, of injury, of sickness, of disease, of death. It came in contact with that and eradicated his power over that man. 
And he leaped and walked. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout glory? glory. That prayer cloth went, just like uh, God took handkerchiefs. Special, God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. And as much as handkerchiefs and aprons went from his body, and they laid on the sick, and the evil spirits came at him, and the sick were made whole. We have a ministry of prayer cloths here. I didn't ask for it. I didn't seek after it. We just found out we have it. How did you find out? We prayed over prayer cloths. People got healed. <laughs> it worked. Amen. You know, and we're seeing more and more. And cancer. We're seeing cancer. Hallelujah. Oh, what an evil disease. What a, what a horrible disease. But we're seeing God's life. Hallelujah. I say we're seeing God's life. The law, the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus transferred in the prayer cloths and going in and laying it on people's bodies and they being healed. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. That's the law that's at work. It eradicates. I say it eradicates. Say it eradicates. Say it with me. It eradicates the laws of sin and death. When the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus eradicates the power of the law of sin and death. Oh, glory be to God. I said glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Humanity is walking and they've been bound by that law of the sin and death. They've been bound by Satan's mastery. They've been bound by the work of the enemy in their life. Oh, glory be to God. Now, time for the coat to go. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for running. I, I like that. She's ready to run up here and grab it. Thank you. That law has been released into the body of Christ. And there's a law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus at work in you right now. Now listen. Twofold. One, it'll work in your circumstances for you in your life. But there's even a greater purpose. It is for it to flow through you and to minister life to others. God wants to bring that law through you so that when you lay hands on the sick, they're healed. See, when Jesus gave the Great Commission, he didn't explain everything. Paul did explain stuff in, in his writings and, and different things, and different things were re revealed as they went through. Revelation came, understanding the, the plan, the power, and the purposes of God. Jesus just said, go lay hands on the sick, and they'll recover. Yep. Now we know why. The law of the Spirit of life is in Christ Jesus. Delivers people from the power of the law of sin and death. We've, we've shared this before. I shared it this morning Wednesday, and I'm going to share it here again today. John G. Lake's story, when he was in Africa with the uh, bubonic plague, and he was, he was helping, with the, um, helping with the dead peoples and, and, and so forth, and um, uh, you know, it, was just, it was a horrible thing. And the, 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 Middish, Brit, the, Middish, the British medical frigate came up. And they got out, and I guess they had all their little snorkel things with the, with the coals in it or whatever to make sure they couldn't catch it. You know, they thought the charcoal would kill the back, whatever. You know, I don't know what they thought. They thought it was going to help. And he, they saw him out there and said, Dr. Lake, doc, please stop that. You can't do that. He says, why? He said, he said, don't you know you'll catch the plague and you'll die? He said, he said no. He said, watch this. And uh, they, got a, they got a slide for a microscope. He said, go, go, go over there. And when they would die, this foam would come out of their mouth. Their lungs would fill up with all this bacteria and congestion and all this stuff. And when they would die, they would foam, would just, they would just foam out of their mouth. It was, just, it was just nasty, disgusting. It was a horrible way to die. Kind of like the Ebola thing. People just died. It was disgusting. You know, uh, as far as, you know, death is never pre pretty, but th this is just nasty. And so they, they took a slide, and they went and they got some of that foam off. He said, they go put it under a microscope. And they went and looked at it. And they looked, and, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's all that bubonic plague all in there. Yeah, it's all in there. He said, now watch this. He went over there, took his hand, and wiped some off. Walked over to the slide and wiped it on the slide and said, now look at that. They put it under the microscope, and they went, it's dying. It's dying right before our eyes. He said, that, sirs, is the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus, overcoming the law of sin and death. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It won't come now in my dwelling. See, when it came in contact with him, the law that was working in him was greater than that law of sin and death, and it eradicated its ability to function. Glory to God. I said glory to God. 
That's why he's called the spirit of life. He comes to impart life. He comes to demonstrate life. He comes to enforce life. Hallelujah. He's come, he's come to here. He's come to our midst. He's come to enforce the life of God in our church, in our individual members of our church, in the, individual, in the, in the individuals in the individual families in our church. His law, he's here to manifest his life in your marriage, in your finances, in your body, in your children, in everything you set your hand to. He's come to manifest his life in you, glory to God. He's come to demonstrate his life in you, glory to God. And that life's just going to spread out of you into others, hallelujah. And you need to come in contact with others and say, look, I had that problem, but I came in contact with the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and it eradicated its effect. Let me pray for you, and that same law will work in you, and it will bring life into you, and it will deliver you, glory to God. Because there's nothing but life there. Satan can't function in the manifest presence of that life. Yes. Just make you say glory. Say hallelujah. Say ha ma ma ba ba ha ha la la ba so ka ba da ha. Glory to God. Amen. Law is at work. Praise be to God, the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. He wants us living, hallelujah, in that law. He wants us receiving from that law. Remember when Jesus stood up one day, <laughs> had a big crowd. See, if you ever think you've got a big crowd, you're, you're, you're successful. But Jesus stood up one day and he said, except you drink my blood and eat my flesh, you have no part of me. And that many that day went away from him. As a matter of fact, the only thing he had left was a 12. And he looked at the 12 disciples and said, well, are you going to leave also? They probably had a crowd. I don't know what kind of crowd they had. They had a pretty big one. They all packed up and left. Got down to 12. Didn't look real good. They said, where else will we go? You're the only one that has the words of life. Not everybody recognizes it, but the words of life are not necessarily the words of, of success or the words of happiness that everybody wants to hear. The happy, clappy church, you know, the hula hoop church. Let's all go hula hoop in church, you know, praise God. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you can get into the areas of success that aren't God the success and really get messed up. Now, I went to Raymond with a guy, and he became very, very, very wealthy in the prosperity preaching circles. Traveled with one of the best known prosperity preachers there are on the planet. Traveled with him. I saw him, actually, he was, actually, he was in, in one of the, um, I won't say the name of the movie, but that, they had these movies that they put out, about four of them, and I won't call about them, I just, but you, you, you may know, he was one of the actors in those. And I saw him at a meeting back, back when those were being done. And I remember looking at him and seeing, and I saw something on him in the spirit. I thought, there's something that's got on him that's not right. You know, but you know, he's still preaching in all the big meetings. He's on the platform with all the big name preachers, and he was doing all kinds of stuff. Well, next thing you know, he's been getting divorced from his wife. What happened? He was beating her. Beating the brains out of her. She couldn't take it anymore and left him. See, we, we look on the outside and say, oh, they got a jet, they got this money, they're prosperous, you know, and they're preaching, and everybody just loves to buy their tapes, and, still, and they go on and on and on. That doesn't mean everything's right. See, if you don't, if you don't work the, the right laws, you'll get messed up. You can get lifted up and proud about your money. Well, they, they end up divorced, and his church gets all messed up. He got, he went, he got, he got like, in trouble criminally. Married again, divorced her. Now they're having supposed, the youth outreach it's come uh, as bare as you dare. He's now no longer, he no longer just believes in Jesus. He believes in Buddha and the uh, Dalai Lama and Hinduism and all kinds of stuff. He's, I mean, he's gone off. I mean, this guy was a word of faith preacher that went the same year that I went to my Bible school. I knew him. He's completely gone off his rocker. But he had... Hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. And everybody thought he was successful. But he's beating his wife. 
And his wife left him. And then the other next wife saying some of the similar things happened. She left him. Now they're having bears at their youth rallies. Painting new pictures and hanging them on the wall in the church. The reason we found out about it, because the city, that city revoked their tax-free status because they were no longer functioning as a church. They were functioning basically as a, as a nightclub. Folks, stop gauging success by numbers or, or, or dollars and start gauging success by how much of the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus is working in you and you're living in it and it's flowing out of you. You're walking like God. I believe God wants to prosper you. But see, we get caught up. You get, you get caught up on one side too much and not keeping things balanced, you'll get messed up. It's, 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 tra- it's tragic. I said it's tragic. That I, all I can think of is how many of God's people gave out of, out of benevolent heart to that ministry to have had it wasted away on such on lasciviousness and licentiousness under the guise, you know, that we're, 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 the, we're the man of God. You've got to give up and bless us. I want to see the church prosper. I want to see our church prosper. I want to see it function and flourish. I want to see you prosper. But I want to see us do everything in a balanced manner where the Spirit of God's leading us, where the Spirit of God's functioning in us, where if what we're involved in doesn't produce life, we, we cut it off yeah. out of our life. That we eradicate things. There is no way in the world a church should be in a place where they're having come, come and, be, and, and come as bare as you dare. Clothes were not wanted. And called it the youth outreach. Know ye not? In the last days, men should be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. If you don't think we're living in the last days, I, this stuff, you could, I couldn't even dream, you couldn't make this stuff up. Going on in the church. Lesbian and homosexual ministers. Bear as you dare youth rallies. Under the guise of we're, whatever we're doing. And it's all about one thing. So, how do we handle money and not get out of balance? You stay and allow the Holy Ghost, the law, the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus to work in you so that when things come that are out of the kingdom of darkness, out of the kingdom of death, it's eradicating them. And, it's, and the spirit of God is saying, leave that alone. Amen. I'm going to step over here. I mean, Brother Hagin, before, you know, before he ever produced a single book, he, he had been recording his sermons on Real to Real. Remember, how many remember Real to Real? Okay. You know, he used to record his sermons on a reel-to-reel. That's, that's before 8-track, that's before cassette, that's before anything. A reel-to-reel. You know? You had to wind it all through in there. It was a big old clunky machine. had these big things on it. You know, you had to you know, get them all in there and hit record and record. And then you had to wind it off and rewind it back and get it ready. And they, they had all those things. And, and the Lord started talking to him about writing books. Taking books, taking their sermons and having them edited out into books. And while he's praying about that, these men come to him one day and said, Brother Hagin, we want to take your, we'll, we'll come in, we'll take all your sermons, and we'll convert them into books, and you'll make a lot of money. It won't cost you a dime. He said, and they said, you'll make a lot of money. For a year and a half, he wouldn't do it. The Lord already told him to do it, but he wouldn't do it. Do you know why? Because they, they said, you'll make a lot of money. And finally, something struck him wrong about that. He wouldn't do it, and he left it on and, and just put it on the shelf. And then came back, and the Lord started praying about it. He said, he, he, the Lord spoke to him and said, had you given those men the authority to do that, they'd have taken control of your ministry. They would have taken control of your ministry. He, had to, he, had, he could not let the wrong motive. See, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus arrest us. Why? Because wrong motives are out of the kingdom of darkness. I said, they're out of the kingdom of darkness and the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will rise up in us and say, no! That's, the wrong, that's out of the wrong kingdom. So the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Oh, praise God. Isn't it good to know that we can have God's life touching every aspect of our life? Now listen, we have to listen to him. We have to listen to him. Because like, just like Brother Hagin, he was getting ready to, do, he was getting ready to start those books, and those guys came. And they, uh, let's face it, and how many Christians today would have gone, man, praise God. 
We're going to have our books out there and it ain't going to cost us a penny. That's the Lord. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> because it won't go cost us any money. It had to be God. It didn't have to be God. As a matter of fact, the Lord told him that they were going to take control of his ministry. But it looked good. That's why we have to listen to the, to the voice of the Spirit. Because there are things that will come our life and things that will come our way and people that will come our way. They're, they're, they're there. They're emissaries of the devil sent to bring us out of what God has for us. And we have to listen to the spirit of life. We have to let him speak to us. We have to let him direct and guide us so that we walk in the truth and walk in the light and don't miss what God has for us because the, the emissary, I mean, the emissary or the circumstances or the things of the devil have been sent our way to trick us into believing that this is what God wants when all along it's out of the kingdom of darkness and it's sent to, to thwart our walking where God wants us to but the law of the spirit of life will rise up in you and you'll know don't ever override the no I said don't ever override the no I've seen churches do it I've seen ministers do it and every single time and I knew it was wrong but I wasn't in a position to say anything I watched things come, and if the pastors had been listening to the, to the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of life, that these things were death to the call that they had on their life and not a blessing, completely steer their lives and ministry in a direction that wasn't God's plan. And the whole time, the, and I'm sitting there going, don't they know it? Don't they know it? Don't they know it? Don't they know it? Oh, God, can't they see? But it was wrong. They wouldn't listen. Try to say something. Make fun of you. You, know, you just don't know what you're talking about. Oh, no. I know what I was talking about. I knew. Because that law was working in me, too. That spirit's working in me. And I recognize death out of the kingdom of darkness. I still see it. I've watched people walk out of our church in the past years ago. I've watched them walk out, listening to the wrong spirit, knowing what was ahead of them. Try, oh God, help them. Look, won't you listen? They won't listen to you. And then watch the misery and the destruction take place. Was that God's plan? No, it wasn't God's plan. He tried to warn them tried to help them and they wouldn't listen oh god think of the couple that came into our church and she was trafficking cocaine and got off and we went and preached and we went down to the, talk to the court during her court hearing and got her off all she got was probation she had she had like two pounds of heroin or co cocaine cocaine i mean she was going up for a while she came in and got saved went to court the judge let her off with probation and she lived right Turn on to the Lord, serving God, married or living boyfriend, adopted children, doing great. And then somebody came in with a bunch of junk and got them off on, on, on some stuff, and then they listened to it, and, and, I, and, I, and I tried to help them. I tried, oh God, don't do this, don't do this. They left our church, mad. See what happened? That wrong spirit got out. The law, the, the Satan came. The laws of the, of the, uh, the kingdom of, of darkness and the sin of death began to operate again. It fell away from God. Husband died. She lost everything. Was that God? No, that wasn't God's plan. That wasn't God's plan. You weep. Oh God, don't let. Oh God. Brother Hagen's talking about one time the year before I got there. They had a, had a guy sitting back in, in the uh, the auditorium, sitting back there, and he looked out there and during and got into the spirit. See the law of the spirit of life. He'll come. Not only does he produce life, he'll come to show you where the life is. So that might be a warning in there, but it'll show you where the life is. He looked back at this young man, and he, 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 spoke, he, stopped, he stopped teaching. He said, he said there's, a, there's, a, there's a cloud of death over you. He said, now you don't have to die. 
He said, come see me. You need to come see me three times and we can avert this. We, I'll, I'll tell you how to get out. <laughs> Students tur turned to him after class and said, what are you going to do? He said, I ain't going to go see him. I'm not going to go see him. The man just said, there's a cloud of death hanging over your head. And if you'll come see me, we can, you can avert that. You don't have to die. I'm not going to go see him. What was that? That was the spirit of life saying, there's a way to avert the law of sin and death. There's a way to get out of this. If you'll come, I'll teach you how to get out of it. Brother Hank said, what? so what happened? He said, he died. The spirit of life is always trying to guide us into life. That's not what I want to do. I think this is better. I like this better. I'm telling what you like and what you think don't matter. We were, we were, I don't know why I'm over here. We were over at uh, 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 Alumni Week. Now, back, back when I, after I graduated, we had, we had Alumni Week. Now, Alumni Week runs concurrent with a Winter Bible Seminar in Tulsa. But back then, we had, we had meetings. We had special, I mean, T.L. Osborne would come in, Cope would come in. I mean, all those guys would come in and preach at our Alumni Week. Not a bad, not a bad line of it. T.L. Osborne preaching, you know. Wow! Say that backwards. Wow! Loved Brother Osborne's ministry. But um, so we, we'd have a big banquet because a lot of people would come back then. So we'd go down to the assembly center and, and where they had the camp meeting, and we'd just go down to the assembly center and have a big banquet at the assembly center. A, a dinner, the last night of, of, of alumni, we would have a big banquet. So we're there, 82, it's either 82 or 83, we're there, and Brother Hagen's up there, and all of a sudden he just starts, he goes, uh, uh, it's supposed to be an alumni week. Woo, see the spirit of life senses the operation of the law of sin and death in manifestation in people's lives, and he's come, what? He comes to bring life, to eradicate it, but people have to cooperate with it. Brother Hagen stands up, and he starts talking for a second, all of a sudden he goes, Air, another year shall come and go, and there will be those among us who will be absent. Not that they'll be absent in the flesh, but they'll be absent from the earth. Now that's just a long way to say it. They're going to die. He said, but it doesn't have to be so. He said, you're in adultery. All three of them were in adultery. Ministers in adultery. He said, if you'll repent and turn away from those relationships, you'll be spared and you'll live and not die. See, the, what's that? That's the, that's the spirit of life. He's come. There's death and operation in people's lives, and he's given them the answer to walk in life and not in death. Get rid of the harlot. Stop being a man whore. Real simple. That's, I mean, you're simple. Stop being a man whore. Get rid of the harlot. Get right with God and you'll live. But whatever they were doing was just better than, you know, living. Now, two of them did repent. They came, we, got, we got back the next year and Brother Hagin was standing up and saying, well, you know, last, last year this time we had this uh, the, the, the word of the Lord came. He said two of those people repented and, they came and came and called and repented and got right with God and they're alive. He said the third one they found out later died, would not repent. Kept. Why didn't God say? Because he told the, the life came. Here's what you do to live. So that law of the spirit of life, remember he's also the wisdom and judgment and burning all this. He'll tell you what to do so you can walk in the law of life, the spirit of life. He finishes that and says, hey, another year will come and go. And there are those among us that will not be present. Not that they'll be absent in the flesh, but they'll be, they won't be, they'll be absent from the earth. And guess what? Same thing, adultery. You'd think the bozos would have figured out from the year before it wasn't a good thing to do that. The Holy Ghost keeps, now we've got people going around, lesbianism and homosexuality, I can't even imagine what, you know, we, the, the prophets are not speaking. Why? Because it hurts your numbers. It hurts the money. People don't want, to hear, don't want to be told that, you know, homosexuality and lesbianism is a sin and you're going to go to hell if you don't get right with God. And people don't want to hear, oh, we just think everybody ought to have their, you know, be able to love like they want to love. The law of life says you've got to walk according to God's laws and, so, and God doesn't want you going to hell. So he tells you, people who won't preach the truth aren't walking in the spirit of life. They're willing to enforce the law of the spirit of death on people so they can get their money. It ain't never happened here. Ain't never going to happen here. 
And if you don't like it, tough. It's going to keep staying the same way. Sin is sin is sin. And the spirit of life will show you how to live above sin, show you how to live free from sin, how to live in the life of God, and not live in the, the, the consequences of sin. Remember, the, the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's trying to draw you out of getting a payday from sin into receiving the gift from God. And that's not done by saying God doesn't care what you do. The spirit of life wants to cut off everything that's unconnected to the law of sin and death and bring you into and bless you with the benefits of the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. Not because he hates you and doesn't want you to have any fun, but because he loves you and wants you to be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.